All right, welcome to hopefully, probably our one and only part three tutorial where we're going to create our Pro Pharma financial statements. And it is in this tab that we're later going to calculate our free cash flow and do our sensitivity analysis. Um, but we're not going to do that now. If you want to do that um, as part of this submission, I will take a look at it and give you feedback. And then you'll be a step ahead when you need to do this for your final part. Um, but, you know, take it as it comes, whatever you want to do. So I've created this little plan of attack. Um, obviously, I started with some formatting. But we're going to bring over our categories, right? Sales revenue, total revenue, all of the income statement, balance sheet drivers, um, categories. Then we'll bring over the drivers. Then we're going to bring over our most recent actual values. For me, that was 2013. Um, and then we're going to fix any funky little lines like dividends paid is weird on my sheet. You might have a sales growth rate or something else in there. Um, I'll take note of any of my drivers that aren't percentage of total revenue um, so that I don't incorrectly forecast them. And then we'll actually perform the forecast. Let's see if we can get this all done in 15 minutes or less. All right, start with your common size statement. Bring over your categories. Highlight. Command C, bring them over, Command V. Step one, done. All right. Step two, bring over your drivers. Here we go. Drivers, highlight them all. The trick is you can't just paste them. You have to do what's called paste special. If you just paste them, here I'll try it. See I get these weird references and blah blah blah. It doesn't work. You have to paste special where you bring only the values in the number formats and then it looks pretty. right? So what you have to do next is line up your sales revenue. right? You might have sales revenue above or below because of where you placed this value drivers line. You may need to add a row, or you may need to delete a row, either way. And then after that, we need to bring over our most recent values. For me, it's 2013. For you, it will either be 2013 or 2014, not the common size percentages, but the actual dollar values. Great. Again, make sure that your sales revenue lines up with your value driver and the title. So now we're going to set up our years that we're going to forecast. So we're going to forecast 2014, 2015, 16, 17, 18. If you have 2014 as your most recent actual year, um, you'll be forecasting 15 through 19. All right, um, we brought over our drivers. We bring over our, our most recent values. Then we need to just go through, and I want to adjust my dividend payout ratio. See how I have this dividend payout ratio? Oh, my other funky lines are that it brought over all of these things that we had hidden. I'm going to hide those again. And then instead of dividend payout ratio, I need two things. I need my dividends paid and I need my addition to retained earnings. In both cases, we, these are going to be the forecasted values. This number here would be the dollar amount of dividends that they paid in 2013. If that's what that is, enter it. If not, don't worry about it. But we're going to use a, oops, payment of dividends, ignore me. You only want one dividend payment row. Make sure you only have one. I had entered it twice. I had to delete it. That's fine. The rest will get added to retained earnings. All right. So 
what is next? The next thing is to note the drivers that aren't a percentage of total revenue. And I don't mean things like interest um, or depreciation or cash, which is the plug. Uh, what I mean is that most everything gets forecasted as a percentage of total revenue except for those ones that we went through, right? Tax, interest, depreciation, cash. However, when I was looking at my common size statement and creating my drivers, I gave sales a growth rate, right? Because it was 100% of total revenue every year. That's not helpful, right? I need something to forecast the growth in sales or decline in sales as that may be. And also, for additional paid-in capital and treasury stock, the rates of those as percentages of sales seem to have their own trajectory, right? And as it turns out, additional paid-in capital is growing faster than sales and treasury stock is growing more slowly than sales. So each of those three are not forecasted as percentage of sales or as this percentage of total revenue. Instead, they're growth rates in their own right. I'm going to mark them just so that I don't forecast them as a percentage of sales, a percentage of revenue, right? That would be a mistake. Okay, we did it. Any drivers that aren't percentage of total revenue. And then here's our favorite part, the actual forecast. Um, remember the golden rules, the holy grail of forecasting. Um, there's a few of them. The first one is to always use an absolute reference whenever you reference a value driver. Um, and another is to don't panic about referencing empty cells. All right, are you ready? So we're forecasting that 2014 sales are going to be 7.7 for six, 7.7 percent larger than 2013 sales. Right, I gave it a value driver. If you have another sales item, you'll line it up there. But the total revenue is going to equal the sum of all your sales revenues, right? Well, direct costs, cost of goods sold, we think is going to be roughly a little over half of our total revenue. So it's going to cost, it takes Hershey's about half of every dollar they make just to go into raw materials, direct labor, right? It's what it costs them to make their product. Then we're going to take a look at depreciation and amortization, which we're forecasting to be just under 6% of average plant property and equipment at cost, um, gross plant property and equipment. And here, I want it to be the average of what we started the year with and what we ended the year with. So I'm going to use 2013 actual data plus 2014's forecasted data. Well, once we have all of those things, right, now we get to our next subtotal line, which is gross profit. And gross profit is equal to total revenue less direct costs, and in this case, less depreciation and amortization. Then we can move on to our next item, sales general and administrative, which is 26% of total revenue, restructure, remediation, impairment less than 1% of total revenue. And then I've got my total indirect operating costs. So indirect operating costs, in my case, include sell selling general and administrative and restructuring, remediation, and impairment. Right? For you, it'll be anything below gross profit, which means my operating income, income from operations, is equal to gross profit less total indirect operating costs, right? These are all the ones we didn't get drivers for because we calculate them as percent or as a sum total of other things that we forecasted. Interest expense gross is going to be, in this case, interest paid. And we think that our interest paid on debt is going to be 4.73% of our average balance of debt, right? 
the thing is, is that we have two balances of debt that are important here. So we have our average balance of current debt. plus our average balance of long-term debt. If your firm doesn't have current debt, then you only have one to deal with, more power to you. And our interest income is based on our interest value driver and our total of cash, cash equivalents, and short-term investments. Right, That line item is empty for that second year, but that's okay which means that our total non-operating income, get this, is going to be equal to negative interest paid plus interest income, right? This number is then going to probably be negative, and it's our only expense that's entered as a negative number. Um, you can adjust them so they're all entered as negative if that makes more sense to you. But I leave this one negative, and that's the convention that interest can be positive or negative, and you need the sign to tell. So our earnings before tax, then, is going to be based on our operating income minus our total non-operating income. But if that number is entered negative, you add the negative. And our taxation, 35.21 percent of our earnings before tax gives us a net income of earnings before tax less income tax expense Whew. and of that net income we are going to pay half of it as dividends and we are then going to add the remaining bit to retained earnings. And with this 50% dividend payout ratio, it makes everything pretty handy. All right. How long have we been here? 12 minutes? All right, we're going to do another one uh, showing how to forecast the balance sheet. Happy calculating. Email me if you have any questions.